I have risen from the dead. I am so sorry that it took so long to put out this new episode, but hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build the Ultimate Theme Park and Planet Coaster. My name is Attacking Toucans, and I'm bringing back this series with full HD goodness. Look, this video is in 1080p. It's looking much better. I have the graphics set on high because my computer's better now, and everything is just looking on the up and up for this series, and I do want to apologize. I said in an earlier episode that I would keep stop apologizing when there was gaps in between videos, but this gap was exceptionally large, um, so I felt like an apology was in order, but I just want to let you guys know that I never plan on canceling the series. If there's a large gap in between videos, it's just because I'm working on other things, but I do plan to eventually, like, finish this series. It's just kind of like my side passion project that I'm working on, not necessarily like the main thing that I'm doing. And also off camera, I went ahead and like fixed up this little market section. I fixed the wall around it. I just had to go through and like meticulously clean it up because there was lots of weird edges and because it's really hard to make circular round things in this game when it comes to like buildings and walls sometimes. And so I went through and cleaned that all up off camera because it was just there was no point to show it on camera. There, it was not fun. I can assure you that it was not fun, and you do not want to see it. But today, we're not even going to be working on the castle section. We're going back over to the sci-fi area, because that is how we're doing things. We switch things every single episode. But right now, I'm just showing you guys some HD shots of the park, because it looks so gorgeous, darling. It looks amazing with these HD graphics. So I'm just kind of doing this opening while showing you guys what it looks like in HD because you guys haven't seen it like this before and I felt like you guys should see it the way I see it when I'm playing the game instead of the crappy 720p recordings that I used to show it in and like the frame rate is much better I am really excited for what we have in store for this episode. I think this episode might be one of the coolest episodes that we have so far which is a great way to bring this series back so let's go ahead and jump right into it so the very first thing I'm doing is I'm building a fence in between the first coaster we built and the path because I believe whenever I was decorating this coaster from the get-go, there wasn't really any fences in the game, but recently they've done an update that added a lot of fences to the game, and so I wanted to go ahead and put a fence here because I felt like it was kind of weird not having a fence. Like anybody could easily hop that little railing and go and just get their fingers cut off if they like decided to put their fingers on a roller coaster track. I'm not sure who would be dumb enough to do that, but this is, there's lots of stupid people in the world, and the last thing we want is a lawsuit on our hands because somebody got their fingers ran over by a roller coaster. You feel me? Next, I wanted to add a little something special, so I put these um, guards standing like on an outpost outside the space center just to bring a little more life to it. And then next, I decided I wanted to have a floating robot that has some like jet propulsion jetpack on his butt <laughs> fixing something on the main gift shop. I just thought having some more moving aspects would bring more life to the park. Now back to work on our gigantic indoor space theme park complex. Try saying that 20,000 times fast. Do what I dare you would take you like two weeks to do it, I bet. Um, so I will admit one of the reasons that I didn't work on this series for a bit was because I was kind of at a standstill. I didn't know exactly how I wanted to finish this building. And every time I thought about it, I'm like, eh. I will think about it later and that kind of like built up and then I just never built it but I finally figured out what I wanted to do for this so originally I was kind of afraid that this would look like just some sort of weird gymnasium from the outside if I would make it too flat across the top so I decided that I wanted to go big I wanted to build up and make this thing very grandiose another thing I really want to do is make it so when you stand at the very beginning of the park things get higher in the background so you just see, can almost see the whole entire theme park whenever you're at the front of it so building things upwards as the park goes back is the way to make that happen so i decided to make a really tall section on this building to really just make it stand out and i thought it would also look a bit more space like if we had just some sort of weird sci-fi looking skyscraper now the thing that saved my life while building this is the ability to be able to copy and paste large sections of walls and stuff like think the lord that that's an option because building this thing one piece at a time would have been a pain although i do sometimes suggest to build structures one piece at a time because then that's how you usually come up with more intricate looking structures instead of just box like looking structures but for building this big i decided to start off with a more 
larger box-like structure and then just add tons of intricacy with the decorations I put on the outside just because the building was just so large and I didn't want to spend a million years building it like one little piece at a time. But trust me, I plan to put a lot of extra decorations on the skyscraper to really make it look more intricate. While I am building the base of this building though, I wanted to tell you guys about the new DLC they added to the game. If you did not know, they just added a spooky DLC pack to the game which fans are so excited for because they added a lot of really amazing elements to the game with this. Now this is the first main paid DLC. The DLC costs $11, but it is well worth it because you get over 300 new scenery items with it, most of which are really really good and will give you a lot more opportunities. Some of the main elements of this DLC include things like ghosts, scarecrows, pumpkins, coffins, graves, there's a lot of furniture so you can decorate haunted houses, new lights, wallpapers, windows, a whole new type of building that you can create which I'm really excited about because this game needs more roof options. Kind of a side note, but one of the things I really wish they would add is more corner roof pieces because for a lot of the scenery packs, especially like the sci-fi, the roof options is really hard to make roofs sometimes are very limited because there's no corner pieces for the roofs. So like as you see on this building, I have to build just like kind of pointed rooftops and then put walls on one side of them. That's pretty much the only option you have. You can't make it like a pyramid. So I wish they would add angles to some of the roofs. Go back and like patch a little bit of the scenery packs. I might try to contact them and ask them if they can do that because that doesn't seem like it would be very hard to do but would be very much appreciated. But going back to the spooky scenery pack, they also added new special effects, they added colorable mist and fire so you can really do kind of cool things with that. They added a lightning strike, um, rain, rain clouds, which both of those are really interesting and cool, can really add some cool effects by doing that. Then they added a couple new rides, both of which are track rides where you ride in a cart around the set track. Um, these are best used for haunted horror rides whenever you just kind of ride through a haunted house or something. One of them is really cool though because as the guests are riding on it, you're able to change the angle and the direction of the cart to your own manual settings so you can have the cart turn and look at specific items. So that'll be really cool. You can make the types of rides that you would find in parks like Universal Studios that are very heavily themed. Some examples I'm thinking of are like the Spider-Man ride or there's a Harry Potter ride sort of similar to it. You're not like in a cart, you're kind of like, well, I think you are in a cart, but it really kind of like just points at certain items. And so you can really just kind of have a very fly through feel to it. I'm gonna cut myself off for a second and just point out that this is the logo that I chose for this building. I decided to kind of make it almost like a gigantic sci-fi, like future business. And I named it Oko. Um, I just now realized that that's very similar to the name of those little chicken human things from Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess that you find inside the temple, <laughs> but I just thought Oko, it, I named it Oko because I made the logo an O and then I added Ko afterwards and then I thought Oko sounded cool, so I'm like, hey, Oko. So I'm also going to copyright that and trademark that so nobody else can take that from me because I think that's a kind of cool business name. But I also put one of these inside the building. If you didn't see that episode, I have one inside the building as well. And then the lights even change colors very slowly on the logo because I put some like triggers on the roller coaster that trigger the colors. It's pretty cool. Also, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to put on the inside of this giant tower. I haven't fully figured that out yet. I'm not sure if I want to fill it with something or if I just want to like kind of cap it off and make it seem like there might actually be businesses or apartments or something up there. I'm not entirely sure. But anyways, back to the spooky pack. I'm not necessarily going to talk much more about that. If you guys do want to know some details about that pack and want to see like all the specific elements they added to this game, um, there's a YouTuber named Geekism. Whenever a new DLC pack comes out, he typically goes over all of the items individually and kind of talks about them and, and thoroughly explains all the new things that they added. So if you guys want some information on that, I would definitely advise you to check out his YouTube channel. He does a really good job and is definitely worth watching if that is something that you want to know about. So in this episode, my main goal is to just finish the main structure of this building just because I wanted to know what the shape was like. And then after we're done building the structure, we're going to go and start decorating the coaster that's behind it. Um, I think we'll probably need one more full episode to finish decorating this giant building and then we will fully be done with it, finally. But it's turning out pretty cool, I mean it's nice, it looms over a lot of the park. There's three rides inside, a food court, a bathroom, there's quite a bit and I'm pretty happy with it. 
But anyways, our park is looking pretty large when you like stand in the very front. And I'm really happy with that. It's really filling out and it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger, which is awesome. Anyways, let's go ahead and start decorating this coaster back here. It has been built for a while, but we haven't put any scenery to it. Um, we need to do some more terraforming, we need to add some decorations, more trees and wildlife and textures to the ground to make it seem more realistic. So that is what we're going to do for the rest of this episode. Now, so for the main theme on this coaster, I decided to go with aliens versus humans. I wanted to make it themed like an alien war. So we're going to have a crashed UFO back in this corner. I want to have a UFO flying towards the track at one point. I want to have humans with giant, there's like some giant dog animatronics that are gigantic robot dogs that are like war machines. So I want to have those fighting against the UFOs and the aliens. And then there's animatronics of humans fighting and animatronics of aliens fighting. And so we're going to have those like pointed at each other and they're going to be, it's honestly going to look really cool when it's done and I'm really excited. So a lot of this decorating is mostly going to be naturalizing things. So adding trees, bushes, rocks, making the ground look a bit more natural, trying to make the textures like blend in with each other. It's one of those things that's really repetitive and can take up a lot of time. Probably one of the most necessary things when decorating rides. And then I wanted to make it look like this ship had just crashed and is still on fire and whatnot. So I used fire and smoke and mist to really give like a cool ambience to it. And also I used the new colored fire to add some blue fire. And I think the blue fire really makes it look sharp and just really, it looks so dope, honestly. I think this looks really cool. <laughs> Also, I think I mentioned this last episode, but I think I'm going to start putting out some videos where we ride the rides once they are completed, now that I'm able to record this game in good quality, mainly because of the fact that those types of videos are the types of videos that will get more people interested in this park once they can see the type of rides you can build in this game and they'll want to see like how it's made and so that they can refer back to the series to see to see the rides being built and then they can also start following to see what else I put in this park. I think it would just be good advertisement for this series and I wouldn't complain if more people got interested in the series. I mean, usually when more people are interested in a project I'm working on, I'm more inclined to work on that project because I feel like more people are like depending on me to put out those videos. And also just kind of a side note to what I was just talking about, but I kind of wanted to ask something related to this just to find out. But do I talk too quickly during these videos? Do you guys want me to slow down? when I'm talking or do I talk at a fine pace? Because I don't want to like talk too fast to where you guys like can't really understand what I'm saying. So if I am talking too fast, just let me know and I'll try to slow down with what I'm saying. That might just be me being like over self-conscious of the way I'm talking and like what I'm saying. I think lots of people have those self-conscious thoughts in their brain. But I'm really liking the terraforming that I did for this ride once I really went through and started detailing the mountains. I put a nice little lake slash river going through this valley which I think was a nice little touch because everyone likes some water. It seems a bit more realistic especially at the bottom of a mountain. That's usually what carves out valleys in a mountain in the first place so I think that kind of naturalizes things even more. And then just kind of playing with these textures and trying to make them blend together and then adding other trees. It's just all one big process. But the thing I like about this ride, and so far about everything in the park, is that it's realistic. Pretty much everything in my park is something that could be built in real life. The thing that's unrealistic about it is that you would have to have a really, 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 really high budget to build the things that I'm doing. Just because I'm using like really big pieces of scenery, really large buildings, doing really big, like huge amounts of terraforming that you wouldn't see in a real life theme park. But I think that's the fun thing about it is I'm making this realistic, but I'm still adding those video game exaggerations, taking advantage of the fact that this is still a video game. I mean, I could make this park 100% realistic when it comes to the budget and make it seem like something you would see 100% in real life. But I'm kind of going for an exaggerated realistic look, if that makes any sense. Something that you wouldn't actually see, but if somebody had $70 billion and they wanted to build a theme park, they totally could do this. And I love this UFO right here. I almost thought about putting it floating in the midair, but I'm like, no, that kind of takes away the realism thing that I'm going for. So I ended up putting it on a giant like steel beam, but then I added like fire boosters coming out of the back so it seemed like it was flying through the air, like flying with the coaster and flying towards the humans that are attacking, and then it kind of helps the other UFO that's crashed make sense. Like, it almost looks like this UFO is about to do the same thing, which I'm entirely okay with. This whole scene kind of looks like something you would see in Halo, 
Not exactly, but I kind of get a Halo vibe, especially with the environment and the terraforming, the landscaping. It just kind of looks like something Halo-esque. And speaking of the Halo series, that's like a game series I never really got into, but still a game I would love to play through the campaign mode of, like the whole entire like, the whole entire series. I'm not sure if I'll ever have time to do so, especially with how much time I put into Planet Coaster. Like I think I have over 200 hours in this game now, like between playing in sandbox mode, like working on this park, and playing the campaign mode. And something I'm really wanting to get into that I haven't started yet is I still want to start doing some Planet Coaster streams where each stream that I do, we play a different level in the campaign mode. I might start doing that bi-weekly. I really just need to get a stream schedule and start like planning this stuff out. I'm just really lazy. I'm not lazy, I'm just unorganized is a better <laughs> way to phrase it, I guess. But I'm really getting detailed with this war. I'm putting all the aliens behind little barricades. Um, I'm trying to point them all in angles so it looks like they're actually shooting at the humans. And same for the humans. And then for the little ships that I put in there, I'm not putting in the supports today, but I will put like little poles connecting them to the ground just so it all seems realistic. And I will add more people over time. We're not gonna finish all the decorating for this ride this episode, but we'll get pretty darn close. I am excited for the next episode though because we're going to start working more on the medieval section and now that they added the spooky scenery, a lot of the elements from the spooky scenery will be great for a castle because they added a lot more castle elements with the spooky scenery as well since the spooky stuff coincides with like haunted castles and all that jazz and so I think now once we build the castle with the spooky elements added such as they added cobwebs which are going to be nice that will definitely be a welcome addition. Um, along with, they added spiders, uh, and when I say spiders, they added like an effect where it seems like little tiny spiders are crawling up and down walls. Like, I love all the effects they're adding. I'm wondering how long they plan to keep adding new elements to this game. I hope it's forever. I hope this is the game they keep on adding on to for years to come. <laughs> I mean, if they keep on releasing DLC and people are buying it, they'll probably keep on releasing DLC. I mean, if it's making money and people are still enjoying their product, hopefully they won't see a reason to quit. I mean, they made the best roller coaster simulator ever, which is, I never really brought this up. I've never really even talked about this game on the series so far, but Roller Coaster Tycoon World. That's also a game I need to like just play for a little bit just because it's so bad. I've seen so many videos on how bad that game is, and I kind of want to try it out for myself and see if it's really that bad. But at the same time, I don't want to have to spend money to try it out. I mean, I wonder if it'd, be, <laughs> if it'd be rude for me to like email the developers and be like, hey, can I get a free copy of your game so I could try it out or whatnot and like stream it or whatnot. And then like whenever I get it, completely trash it because the game is actually just that terrible. <laughs> I wonder if they're even trying to do anything with that game or if they're patching it or updating it. I kind of hope not because that game is pretty much beyond saving. But oh my gosh, we're pretty much done with this episode. I'm out of time. This episode really flew by and I'm really sorry it's over, but I plan to upload a new episode as soon as I possibly can. I will not make you wait as long for the next episode. I promise. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you made it through this whole entire thing and haven't given up on this series, I really appreciate it. Hopefully I can kick the series back off because after what we built this episode, I'm really feeling it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.